Theo, I think once I start walking, no more vocal. Meredith Monk and her vocal ensemble are here at Oliver Ranch in Geyserville to inaugurate the 76-foot cement tower. This is their final rehearsal before they perform in front of a live audience. Artist Ann Hamilton designed this tower to be a unique acoustic environment and a new kind of performance space. It's like making a vocal cord for the ranch. It will, we hope, continue to be something that reveals itself to us in terms of it becoming a place now for other work to respond to. It's going to be inhabited or dwelled in in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, it's never going to be a finished thing. More than three years earlier, in 2004, Ann Hamilton's tower was only an idea, a set of blueprints drawn up by an architecture firm. We want to set up the, the, what our game plan today is to try and focus on what the, fi what the final details of this so that we can move ahead with design and uh, architectural component and the structural component with a goal towards a build building permit. Ann Hamilton is the latest in a long line of contemporary visual artists to be commissioned by Steve and Nancy Oliver to create site-specific work. Over the past 22 years, their ranch has become one of the most prestigious private art preserves in the country. Somewhere right, where, somewhere right where I'm standing is the center of the tower. I'd been talking to Steve on and off since maybe 88 or 89. Wow. I have never heard Steve say, that's too difficult, we can't do that. That may be a bit much. Ann Hamilton lives in Ohio, but has mounted her large-scale installations around the world. Her conceptual work is highly tactile, it's connected by themes of language, textile, and the body. I'm very used to responding to architectural form and making my work, but not necessarily being the generator of that form. Anne's first design for the tower, an open block construction, was found to be seismically unsound. Instead, they will use cast concrete, but she still wants openings for light in the form. If we knew the number of openings there were, regardless of their shape or form, we can design around it and make it work. More than a collector, Steve's career is construction. His engineering knowledge allows him to be intimately involved in the technical side of the work he commissions. I don't have the process to know whether I'm making the right decision or not. I can make these models and I can look at them, but I'm used to making a lot of decisions like standing there and, and, and feeling them physically. And where do you build within that the act of, um, or the place of response? It's now August, and ground has been broken on the tower, but its exact location hasn't been chosen. Today, Anne must decide where to place the center of the cylinder. I hadn't actually looked down here until this <laughs> moment, and I was like, whoa! Oh, but geology is having an unexpected influence. The soil engineer has discovered uh, an anomaly in his testing uh, with the soil transition at the, at the north end of this project we may have to move the project 20 to 30 feet to the south. He's found a crevice in the bedrock, which indicates the original tower site may be over a fault line. There's a good chance that we could find something deeper as well. Okay. You know? Yeah. So from that there this way, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What they really think is the shale lens they found is actually fairly narrow and thin. And when, since we're going down so deep, we'll probably go through it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they said we're, in, we're just in a little better shape if we stay this way. Six, seven. We want the tower to be founded on very stable soil uh, strata. And our, our job today is to find that and then get Anne to bless its new location and sign off on the new center of the tower. Part of citing it is also figuring out then what this pathway in is because you want to arrive at the bottom. So we may do, have to do some regrading of the actual site. Great spot. That was that was a halt leading the blind. How was your fishing?
Two months later, the excavation for the foundation is complete, and Anne has returned with her son. <laughs> I think I was um, a little bit afraid of this, the scale of this. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, we're at the point where it becomes very real and you see how enormous the actual engineering is. But to come to the site today, it just, it feels right. It feels like we have the right site. So this way seems fine. She still needs to decide where to place the pathways that will approach the tower. Yeah, it's almost like you wouldn't even need a path. It would just be these natural contours that are yeah. slowly converging towards the door. Mm -hmm. That would work much better with the site. Mm. So, so where would you begin this? Basically, we're trying to work with it and not against the site. You know, not to overly intellectually burden the approach, but to let it be mitigated by, you know, what, what this is telling us. And, like, we just haven't been listening. Anne's basic design is a cylindrical tower. Inside are two spiral staircases shaped like a double helix, which never meet. The top is open to the sky, and the bottom holds a reflective pool of water. Anne's tower was inspired by a 16th century Italian well. Farm animals climbing down to the well couldn't turn around, so the second staircase allowed them to climb back up. And what interested me about the form of the double helix in this situation is that one stairway can be a moving performance and one can be a static or moving audience, but that you're wound within each other in the same space. Anne's earlier design of random perforations in the wall of the tower has been thrown out. Her new concept is 24 windows of various shape and size that double as seats. Today, she's getting her first look at them actual size. The window mock-up that we're looking at right now is one of the trickiest parts of this because um, it's really key to how a person experiences the journey up to the top of the tower. It's also key to determine how much light, natural light, filters into the, the inside of the tower. Oh, see? See what? I knew this was coming. One thing that is new today is realizing that by angling um, the wall of the opening that you can actually get your body up in there and that we want that to happen that that's a wonderful little kind of like it's the puppet stage like you don't know until you stand up in there that you start to get a sense of what the life of the thing will be in december construction begins our intent today is to fill up this five foot deep hole with about 270 yards of concrete to create the foundation for Anne's Tower. The concrete pouring will continue for a full year. It will take over 2,000 tons to build the tower in sections. Today, the wooden molds are coming off the last section and sandblasting can begin. It really gives the piece a, a naturally aged look. So we're gonna create instant antiquity by doing that. On a normal, typical construction job, one of the fundamental reasons for the job is to create something that's going to be for some sort of business, for someone to make money. When you work on an art project like this, all that's absent and you really be able to focus, get the feel of the complete, undistracted uh, aspects of, of the piece itself. It's August 2006, two years since groundbreaking. Anne's back to view the tower as it nears completion and check on final details. It's looking great. Things could not be going any better. I know, it looks fantastic. I was worried about the round, but I think it's also true. It's this thing about how it sits in your hand. Yeah. It's gonna be so much better than the square. what we were looking at, yeah. The spiral staircases each contain 128 steps, which gradually narrow as they near the top. As you come in, it's like you're crossed a threshold into a different space. And because you have only natural light, that you, you like go more quiet inside, which makes um, the place then for you to really hear and listen to sound perhaps differently. All of these window wells or light wells are like in a flute for the sound to come out. 
I mean, I just feel so lucky to be able to do this. I mean, it's, you know. I mean, I would never, ever be able to do this. I would, and I think you could never do this with anybody that wasn't like Steve. It's his faith, his belief, his construction knowledge, his, like, this incredible team. The land surrounding the tower will be contoured and grass and trees replanted in time for the opening performance the following spring. Nine months later, the day of Meredith Monk's performance, what Anne is calling the sounding of the tower, has finally arrived. Tonight's premiere is an exclusive preview for Anne's family, friends, and everyone who worked on the tower over the past three years. It's really an opening. It's like a summation and an opening. Gathering all these people who have made it together and people who have been in some ways involved in the process. You know, making it public, that's a real threshold because you make, you make it public. I think the, what's interesting about this structure is that the audience is actually very intimate so, and, it, and it's weaving through, you know, weaving through the performers. The tower is very mythic and you get a lot of echo, but then at the same time, you get a very close relationship to the people. I think what we have in common, Anne's, Anne's and my work, I, um, I think that we're both very interested in mystery and we're very interested in, um, in a sense, um, the invisible. I'm always so happy that she's on the planet because there is someone else that has that same sense of what art is as a living being, breathing, you know, immersive structure. I think this is really a shift in my work in a major way, and it's paralleled this kind of growing towards, coming towards voice being a more central material in my work. It seems so fitting that it would take so long to have made it because I don't think I could have even understood that that's what was happening. I just feel really excited. You know, and I feel most excited to think about what are all the ways that, that it can be inhabited. Yeah.